Welcome back to Hobby Basics. I'll be your instructor, Dana Howell, and today in Hobby Basics 103B, we're going to be finishing up our Stormcast models using some basic highlighting, shading, and layering techniques. For those of you just joining us, Hobby Basics is an online learning series geared towards teaching you the fundamentals of the miniature painting hobby in the format of a college level art class. If this is your first time watching, I'm going to recommend you start at the beginning as each class builds upon concepts established in the previous one. If you're watching on YouTube in the year 2020, there should be a link in the description as well as up in the screen around right here. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Today we're going to be using a lot of the paints we used in the previous few videos, as well as a brand new friend that we're going to be spending a lot of time with from now on, Agrax Earthshade. Agrax is a lot like the Null Oil that we used in Hobby Basics 102, except for this shade has sort of a Agrax tone, otherwise known as a brown tone, instead of the black tone that Null Oil has. To get started, we're going to dip our brush straight into the pot of the Agrax Earthshade, not even bothering to put it onto a palette, and wipe a little bit off to make sure our brush isn't too loaded up. We're going to start by applying an overall coat of this paint to all the white areas on the model. You can see as we apply it that it's going to sink into the recesses of the model, darkening it naturally in places, and on the raised areas it will act more like a very thin glaze, just slightly tinting the white to give it a more earthy feel. After that we can branch out, applying this over some of the other colors such as the reds and the golds, and it will act in a similar way, slightly tinting the color but mostly just helping to redefine some of the shadows. Next, we're going to apply an overall coat of Agrax Earthshade to the face and the hair, and it will work in a similar way here as well. After that, we can proceed to apply the shade as an overall coat to the entire model. The only real place we want to be very careful applying the shade is onto the blue parts of the armor. On these parts, we want to apply it just to the recesses in order to preserve the really bright blue tone we've already put down. Some tutorials may tell you that you should shade your reds with darker red, your blues with darker blue, etc, etc, which is also a valid option depending on the look you're going for. Personally, I find that sometimes giving a model an overall shade of a single color, such as Agrax Earthshade, Really bringing all the colors in line with each other and making it look like a single light source is lighting up the entire model. We might also apply another selective coat or two of this wash to the areas that need it, areas that we feel could use just a bit more shading in the recesses. Next, we're going to do the same thing to the base, applying an overall thick coat of Agrax Earthshade. This will help shade the base as well as giving it a more earthy tone. Once our model has had a little bit of time to dry, we're ready to do some highlights. Starting with a mix of three drops pale sand to one drop glaze medium, we're going to re-highlight some of the most raised areas on the white cloth of the models. We want to be very subtle when we're highlighting and try to leave some areas covered with the shade or just a little bit of the shade in order to create a nice transition from dark to light. If you make a mistake during any of these steps, don't worry. You can always reshade using our Agrax Earthshade and then try again with more highlights. Nothing here is really permanent. You can go back and forth until you get it to a place that you're happy with. Then we're going to use our same pale sand in order to edge highlight the blue armor. This is going to really help it stand out and look like metal. We're going to use our edge highlighting technique here that we used in some of the other videos, just using the side of our brush in order to apply these highlights. We can also do the same thing with the crystal at her side, just highlighting the very edges of the crystal. Now as you can see here, I'm just reapplying a base coat of our cavalry red color to some of the red areas because the washes kind of dulled the color a bit and I want to just punch it up a little bit more, make it a little bit brighter. You can see as I'm doing this, I'm taking care to leave lots of spaces still dark and preserving the shadows from the washes. I will then be doing the very same thing with our skin tone color, which as a reminder is a mixture of cavalry brown and black gray. Next, as an optional step, I am going to attempt to paint the eyes on the figure. This is a fully optional step and often it can be better to just leave the eyes in shadow and it will still look just fine, but I'm going to attempt to add a little bit of definition to the eyes in this case, just for the sake of education so that you know how to do it if you want to try it. Unfortunately, as I was filming 
myself trying to paint the eyes and show you how to do it, I kind of made a mess of the whole process. But I would still like to illustrate the concept for you, so I'm going to be doing the same thing right here on a block of wood to help illustrate the concept in case you'd like to try it on this figure or any other figure in the future. As a first step, we're going to base coat the eyes in black if they are not already a dark color. After that, we're going to paint two lines of our pale sand color on either side of the eyes. One of the other reasons I like to use pale sand instead of pure white is because if you apply pure white to the eyes of your figure, it's going to look a little bit creepy. A slightly off-white color is going to look a little bit more natural for the eyes on a figure. Then we're going to define the eyes by closing them up on the bottom with a black line. And finally, we're going to paint around the area with our original skin tone of the figure. You can see here that I did an okay job with her eyes, but the footage of doing it was such a mess that I'm not going to include it here, so I'm very sorry for that. It's just a bit tedious and you probably don't want to watch it. With a figure at this scale, she'll look fine with just dark recesses where the eyes are located, so I don't think you really have to worry about this step unless you really want to give it a try, but there's the information if you do want to try it. As our next step, we're going to do some dry brushing onto the base with our pale sand color to give it a nice sandy, dusty look and help the highlights really pop. As a reminder of how I like to do dry brushing, we're going to apply just a little bit of our color onto the palette without thinning it at all. Then we're going to take a little bit onto the tips of the bristles of our brush, wipe the majority of it off on our paper towel, and then we're going to do a little test on our thumb to make sure not too much of the vein is going to be applied to the figure. Once that's done, we can dry brush the figure, moving the brush back and forth and letting just the edge of the brush catch on the ridges of the texture of the thing we're painting. After that's done, we're going to mix together a bit of cavalry red and black gray and just a drop of glazed medium, maybe a bit of water, and paint the individual fallen leaves on the base. This will give the base a nice autumn look. After that, we're going to repaint the rim of the base with our black gray color until we can get a nice solid color, and this might take a few coats. As a final optional step, we're going to attempt to do a few layered highlights on the red robes in the back of the figure. If you don't want to do this, honestly, the robe probably looks fine the way it is, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how to do some layering. Layering is a highlighting technique where you can use successively lighter colors in order to highlight a base color. So in this simple example, we will start by mixing a little bit of pale sand into the cavalry brown on our palette, adding a drop or two of glazed medium for transparency, and then we're going to apply this color to just the raised areas on the robes making sure to leave lots of spaces for the original red color underneath. Using glaze medium means this process may take a few more coats, but it will also blend together with the original color a little bit better because of its transparency. After this, we'll go back to our palette and add yet another drop of pale sand to our red mixture, and then apply this color to an even smaller area of our cloak, hitting just the tops of the folds. If you go a bit further with these highlights than you would like, you can always apply a little bit more Agrax to redarken it, or a little bit of the original red color as well. As you can see here, I thought we maybe just needed a few more shadows on the cloak, so I'm applying just another selective coat of Agrax Earthshade to the deepest recesses. While I have my Agrax Earthshade out, I'm going to do the same thing with the base, adding just a bit more Agrax to make some areas look a little bit more dirty and earthy. With all those steps complete, that concludes our class on 103B Shading and Highlights. Today we learned various shading and highlight techniques, how to paint eyes, sort of, and how to do some simple layering techniques on things like robes. In class 104, which is finally coming, we're going to be doing our next set of models that aren't Stormcast. And according to a vote on patreon.com slash Dana Howell, we've decided that we're going to be painting Night Haunt as our next project. In this upcoming class, we're going to be focusing on a few advanced techniques, such as blending different colors together in a sort of wet blending style, doing gradients without an airbrush, object source lighting, and how to kiss your ghost models goodnight to make sure that they're safe and warm. The specific models that I've picked for this demonstration process for our next class are the Mirror Morn Banshees. From the same easy to build line that the previous Stormcast models were from, 
so they already have their basing done, they're easy to build, and they're available at a lot of stores for about $15 for four models. Of course, you could also use any of the other various Night Haunt for this same class, including any of the Night Haunt in the Soul Wars box set or any of the other Night Haunt. There's a lot of them. I'm sure you probably have one by now. In addition to this, you're going to need a few more supplies for next class, including some sort of Tupperware to make a wet palette, as well as some parchment paper for the same reason. You can buy that at your grocery store. Sometimes it's called a baking. I think it's called something different in different countries. In Canada, we call it parchment paper. You're also going to need the following list of supplies, which should cost you less than $30 USD, as we promised in the previous few videos. Your homework for today is going to be to finish up your Stormcast models, completing them using as many steps as you would like. Then you're going to want to assemble your new Night Haunt models using the techniques from Hobby Basics 101, but don't prime them yet because we might do something a little bit different with the priming in Hobby Basics 104. Before we say goodbye for today, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to our patrons on Patreon who make videos like this possible. If you'd like to see your name up here or you'd like to get access to a moderate amount of bonus content, you can visit patreon.com slash Dana Howell. Today we would especially like to thank Ian Glasscock, Lucas Cheesy Pants Chow, Chandler King, and Dennis Wise. And if you'd like to follow my painting progress from day to day, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Dana underscore Howell. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in our next class, Hobby Basics 104.